Time for the sponsor's opening commercial message. The federal health insurance marketplace is now open. So if you're under 65, you're free to shop for the health plan that's right for you. UPMC Health Plan has some of the lowest price plans on the marketplace. Plus, you may be eligible for financial assistance to help you pay for your insurance. For affordable coverage that includes access to UPMC and digital tools to help you manage your health, visit upmchealthplan.com slash marketplace and roll today. All right, you're asking for it, so here it is. Epicast. Listen to this. Right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the 237th episode of the <laughs> Drinking Partners Podcast. Yes, this is our Bill Spaceman Lee episode. I dug deep because he's actually the originator of the phrase guns and butter. All right. <laughs> now, look, because look, 37 is what? a hard athlete to find, man. You don't see a lot of motherfuckers wear 37, but apparently, this dude was a pitcher for like the Boston Red Sox, ran for president in 1988 under the Rhinoceros Party. And his platform, he was built on bulldozing the Rocky Mountains uh, and banning guns and butter. So, I don't know. The guns and butter <laughs> was like a thing where. They were saying we were putting more money into guns than to like real commodities that people could use. So I guess that was like a cause of death in America is guns and butter. I don't know if he was for or against (laughs) butter though. That's the thing. That's what's fucking me up. Like he just sound like a dope ass fucking black exploitation film, man. I thought guns and butter. It fucked with me because when I was looking it up and I was reading, I I thought guns and butter originated with Ving Rhames and Baby Boy. But now I'm like, yo, this shit go back to '88, dog. It was some dude named Bill Spaceman Lee. High as fuck running for president, talking about guns and butter. <laughs> what are the guns? The guns. It starts. Yo. Bonds. All the shit that appreciates value. What's the bu- all the other bullshit that don't mean nothing after you buy? Yo, guns and butter raised me. Shout out to Ving Ring. Shout out to Baby Boy, the movie that I had on VHS. I took that shit to college. It was huge for me. I Whoa. thought I was gonna be Tyrese for a minute okay. just because he lived a life that was like full of drama, but one at the end and they was playing spades, girls pregnant, nobody. It was like I like the fact that they was playing spades. That helps. Yeah. A lot, man. I tried to I tried to play. Just, spades it's nice to see something. like it's nice to see popular movies where you see shit that you actually He'd be doing this shit and be like, yeah, that's cool. Them motherfuckers is cool. That's to all the listeners who don't know what Baby Boy is, go see it. Snoop Dogg's in it. He's carrying a gun. Tupac it's kind of dope. It's, it's, Tupac was supposed to be Jody. But oh, he really? got a little cameo. Oh, that's why they did the cameo name, in the man. bedroom with the Tupac poster. Yeah. Uh, it's a really dope movie. It's kind of hood. And it originated the phrase, $40. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but I am half of your host, Tandem Ed Bailey. I'm joined as always with my co-host, Dave Bracey. Say what up to the people. What's good with you peoples? I don't typically uh, endorse Tyrese movies, man, but that one, it's a Fast banger. Fast and Furious, yeah, I mean, Waist Deep, face, fast Baby Furious, Boy, trash. Four Baby Boy is, uh, Four Brothers is a good one. Yeah, hell four yeah. Four Brothers? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. He got a little bit There's of, two. You know, he had a run. There's two there, had yeah, run. I mean. And you know, he like had, Fast and Furious? He's, man, I, I think Drive he's better. Drive too fast. Nah, I'm not Drive a Fast Furious too dude. Yeah. But I am, I am a lately At motherfucker. Yeah, I mean, he's more of a late, like you see what I'm saying? I like, listen, he, he was cool all the way up, and then once he got Baby Boy money, he turned Weird and that's not fucking. I feel like Baby Boy didn't pay him nothing. Yeah, I don't know. He it was (laughs) it was a good ass. He had Snoop in there and shit. That was a all star lineup. And then he got weird and shit. Have you seen his Facebook? It's it's special. He's going through some shit. For lack of a better word, it is special. Uh, We are the Drinking Partners, and if you're looking for us, you can find us on epicastnetwork.com slash partners pie. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Lipson, Google Play, and Spotify under Drinking Partners. And you can find us on IG, Twitter, and Facebook at Partners Pod. Two hundred. And shit, 237, 230, man, a lot of episodes we've been asking y'all. <laughs> and we will continue to ask you, man. Please hop on iTunes, hop on Facebook, rate and review. Uh, that's how we know what we're doing well. That's how we let others know that we're doing well. And that's how we continue to do well, man. So please hop on iTunes, hop on Facebook, rate and review. Listen, you love us. You see us out in public. 
and you tell us that you love us, not the click of a button. Please tell the internet, tell the world, tell everybody in your community, tell your family, tell motherfuckers you see on the streets. Go to breweries and tell people, oh, there's two black dudes who be talking brewery shit, and they funny as hell. <laughs> they be talking not only brewery shit, they talk to artists, entrepreneurs, politicians, anybody in the city who's doing anything. They talk to them, they sit down, they have a good time, and we get to listen to it on our way to work, at work, or Chilling with the kids. I don't know. Just do wherever you listen Ew. to us, man. But listen, in in, in lieu, because when you see us out, uh, sometimes you haven't rated or reviewed. So in lieu yeah. of rates and reviews, we said this. We will mm-hmm. continue to say this. If you've been listening to the podcast, you know what I'm about to say. Yeah, because it's been and, working. Yeah, it's, 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 it has been working. Yeah, so in lieu of right. rates and reviews, we do accept shots of Hennessy, yeah. all right? So shout out to Car Guy DJ, well, a.k.a. James Logbo, a.k.a. I'm getting money. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the Conways for starting the trend. Shout out to everybody who kept the trend going. Shout out to all the shots of Hennessy I got. Mm. Shout out to the beers too. Like we be getting oh, beers too. Like you can, you can, you can give us beers too. Yeah, and just just drink with us, man. We drink it. We be really to be the drinking motherfucker. We be I'm out here motherfucking drinking. Like you know, I be. You, you know, another the 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 I guess uh, the the <clears throat> last drinking partner show. Of the year, um, and now we're at Butler Brew Works. Butler Brew Works, December nineteenth. That's your last op for twenty nineteen. Oh, if you wanted to get us a drink mm. and you haven't been able to get us a drink, mm, you're you're like, I gotta get them a drink. So we're gonna be at a place full of drinking, full of drink. telling free, jokes. free show, free show for you. And you we get busy on stage too. Like people, yeah. people be sleeping on us though because we be out here doing the podcast. Like, I, like, I feel like I feel like so. I heard you know, pay what you pay what you want is a little bit you know of a better situation or whatever. We we go all free. You know what I mean, like you know, because it's like see, it's a holiday type thing, right? right. Right. And listen, man, we know, we know, kids, the whole nine, and like motherfuckers just stress. We all like trying to buy shit that we really can't, you know, afford. All we throw it on a credit card. We got to do all this other. It's it's the holidays and shit. But shit, you need to at least get a little laughter out that motherfucker. Come through on the freebie. The new year is coming up, though. If you listen into this, it's probably the new year. We don't know. It's still uh, the last decade here. But by the time you hear us, um, it should be a new year. It should be a new a new galaxy. And uh, that's the uh, that's the name of the um, the event coming up over here at Black Forge. I don't know if y'all remember Black Forge or not. Uh, they've been doing great community shit down over here in uh, Allentown for quite some time. Now they're over in McKee's Rocks uh, in their second location. And they're kicking off this event January 4th. And man, the lineup is DJ Femi, Trio, and Shad Ali. Shout out to Chad out. Shad, Shad, Shad Ali. And I mean, DJ Black Femi. Yeah, Starship Manus. I mean, you got a nice little, you got a nice a little mix alumni. Of, yeah, a mix of talent there. Yeah, and and also DP alum. Yeah. yeah, some DP alum over there. I mean, you got a collab beer with Dancing Gnome. Ooh, with Dancing Gnome. That's gonna be something for the galaxy. Kind of has to. I feel like that. <laughs> like it's a new galaxy. Yeah. If you ain't got no galaxy hams in there, I mean. So here we go. Mm. We gotta stop giving up the money. Just look, man. Every man, every episode, is something, something new that's coming out of here, man. And we need these rates and reviews, so and then people to buy these tickets, so we can move to upper middle class. New, these, these new terms, <laughs> you know what I mean, just drop the new term. You know what I mean, every time you hear a new word, just like tweet that shit at us. Um, but this, uh, this event. Is uh, it only has a hundred tickets? Cause you know I mean, that's how that's, that's how many is available. So you got to get them or you don't. Um, and uh, you can check Epicast um, social media. So that's all Epicast Network across the board. I mean, uh, EpicastNetwork.com. Um, hit them up. On January 4th, 2020, a special group of 100 Earthlings will be chosen to leave the Milky Way galaxy and embark on an interdimensional trip with DJ Femi, Tria Plus with hip-hop artist Shad Ali, and Starship Mantis, featuring a special collaboration and adult beverages from Dancing Gnome. This is an event you don't want to miss. January 4th, 2020, at Black Forge Coffee House in McKee's Rocks. Find tickets on Eventbrite by searching, New Year, New Galaxy. Only 100 tickets available. Make sure to lock in your trip before tickets sell out. Prepare for launch. T minus three, two, one. But we do need y'all. Look, we like the you shots of Hennessy. We do that, but we also need for purposes of validation, so people be like, "Yo, this motherfucker is dope." If they're not around, if they haven't listened, we do need y'all to leave. Rates and reviews, and we got another rating. So we we kind of slipped up on this. We haven't been doing it, but I got one to read. It's titled "Y'all," and the okay. contributor is 
at symbol exclamation point question mark ambersand quotation. Oh, that, that motherfucker's is. Uh, 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 cussing at us. I don't know, but the the, Angry, <laughs> the review is and the reason I'm reading this review is aggressive. because we don't need a lot. All right? We don't need y'all to get all poetic and all that. We just need y'all to let people know that we cool. And mm. the review is y'all dope. Five star. That's ah, it. So it's titled like y'all. It. It's it's by someone who we can't find. <laughs> And his five stars say, y'all dope. Thank As, you. We yeah, appreciate that. Fish. Them stats right there. So, so listen, nice. at symbol, like exclamation it. point, question mark, Amber Sand, quotation bar, whoever the fuck you are, <laughs> you got a shot of Henny on me. <laughs> but Hell listen, yeah. I don't want seven Efficiency. motherfuckers coming up to me talking about, I'm at symbol, exclamation <laughs> point. Like, they going to fuck up the order, too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yo, shout out to you. Thank you for leaving it, man. Yeah. We appreciate that. Uh, and speaking of great reviews, uh, we had our... Our uh, guest here, we got rave reviews from her performance at Fresh Fest, mm-hmm. uh, from and, her and, and, drink, her, uh, actually it segues very well, because it's probably Blue no, Works, no, no, had the collabo on, aura, uh, we got the album Mysterious Shit, which which goes well with the Guns and Butter reference, because that was a <laughs> mysterious platform, you've been hearing her in the background, I'm very happy to have her here, we have the songstress Clara Kent in the building say what hey, up to the people. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? It's your girl, Clara Kent. You know, I'm chilling here drinking some uh, blood orange tart ale by, what's it? Trogs? Trogs? Trogs. 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 Yeah, no, I, I did, We I, fucked I, that up yeah, too. Yeah, we did that like, we did that early in the uh, podcast <laughs> and Buzzy, Buzzy set it set, set it straight. I'm glad to be here. I've been wanting to get on this podcast for a minute. I'm a fan of y'all. We t- you got a whole little, that was a nice little drop. Yeah. See, y'all fucking R&B and rappers, y'all be having, y'all could do drops. We be having to do drops and we're terrible <laughs> at it. That was a good ass, like, very fluid job. Like, yo, it's your girl, Claire Kid. And that's information. <laughs> <laughs> that swag and information. Like, if you want to be like me, <laughs> you enjoy tart ales. Yo. <laughs> Catch me on the beach. <laughs> Enjoying the finest. Facts. Facts. Yeah, I keep it true. But it's, it, it, it's nice. It's nice. I mean, like, I, I, again, a fan. Um, oh, thanks. Shit, I can't even. Ah, shit. Like, I mean, last year, last year you came through, shut it shit down at the fest. Yeah, that was um, fun. And, Yo, I was uh, and, so and sick that day, too. Really? really? Oh, yeah, I remember you saying it, like, and, but you ain't looking. No, nah, you got to keep it. You got, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got a show to do. And I was on a can. I can't. And they had, and I was, like, I was you, signing you was on... cans and performing. <laughs> <laughs> like, sick I as hell, giving yeah, everybody, like, getting hey. everybody the flu. Uh, Everybody in the club <laughs> getting sniffly. It's no, it's, 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 <laughs> yo, make it, make it, lay that right now, right after this podcast. But it was cool because it was alcohol, so it was just you Facts. was just killing that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know I mean, what I'm it was it was plenty, <laughs> plenty of the say, cure. That's the partnership. I say some crazy shit, you bring it back around. <laughs> exactly, technically, full circle. <laughs> <laughs> we got the cure. Yeah, you know I mean, uh, but no, nah, no, nah, it was wild. Yeah, you, you know what I mean, you you on stage and you on the can and shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. Shout out to Honey. And then, yeah, yes, shoot, yo, yes, that's, yes, man, yes. That's that. still to this day, that is my favorite collaboration. I swear, that was crazy. That the went into effort it. that went into that, you know, it, it set the bar. That shoot it took all day, too. You, I was like, whoo. And you could tell, like, the second year where people was like, all right, this shit is real. Like, not even yeah. just the actual product, but like, all right, the graphic got to be listen, on point. Like, listen, I just... was not playing about the can this year with <laughs> me and Travis. I was like, listen, Travis, I went out there like at least three or four times making sure the beer was right. Yeah. He is so patient because I was so particular. I was like, listen, I don't really like beer like that. This is the ingredients I like. He was like, watch, I'm going to make something out of it. And he did it. I was like, yo. Yeah. Man, what, what, like, what are the ingredients you gave him? Man? That's, that's wild. I, I always was, be wondering how these these how collaborations come out. The meetings, what's in the, what's in the <laughs> Boardroom, what's yeah. happening at the table? Yeah, I mean, what so happening? when we first met, he actually brought me one of his L's, and it was like, um, like an aphrodisiac type beer or something. I was like, "What? What's this about?" But it was Af- actually, <laughs> yeah. I was like, "What you doing?" No, but it was good. It was good. It had like, um, like figs and oyster shells and like some chocolate type shit. Yes, yeah. that sound freaky. It, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, what <laughs> like, you, you and your girl be, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But no, nah, I'm going to bust out the tra- figs tonight with wifey. Like, hey, I got some figs. For Shout out to Linda and Travis. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> Linda be with the, the Zumba yo, and shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Extra flexy. But uh, <laughs> I love y'all. I love y'all so much. No, but um, when, I, when I met with him, he was like, I I'm, I love challenges like you because you're like, I don't really like beer like that. I'm like, yeah, bro. I'm like a wine drinker a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I like lemonade and I like herbal tea. 
Mm. I was like, I really would like to have something with <laughs> exactly, you know what I'm saying? Gucci. So like I was looking for something with some berries. I love apples. I love like lemon. I love sage. So he was like, yeah, let's do that. We went back and forth, back and forth. I even, uh, there's my favorite tea is Brambleberry tea by Tazo tea. So he mm. bought a whole case of it and just oh, was wow. like, yeah, like we were really like, okay, how are we going? It was really like a collaboration. It was like mm, the, is, one of my favorite collaborations I've ever done. Like warms our heart to hear. Yeah, honestly, it was like dope. that that is dope to to like that you could really insert your personality into yeah. it. And that's that's what's gonna keep the festival going, keep it yeah. you know special, keep it. Unique. I made like a little film on it and put it on my YouTube mm-hmm, just because mm-hmm. it was dope. Are you and, are you a are you an Arnold Palmer fan? Do you mix the lemonade in the tea? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Is that anything? Because man, I'm a man. I'm a <laughs> that shit. Wait, is Arnold Palmer not alcohol? Arnold Palmer is lemonade and tea. I thought that was the album. Yeah, no. Nah, lemonade and like, tea is hitting. That shit is it goes. It's something special. That <sighs> little tang and then that sweetness. Yeah. yeah, and a little bitter that word. like I'm it is just for it. you know what I'm saying? It gotta be the right tea and it gotta be the right lemonade. Yeah, and it's gotta be the right word. proportions. Because if it's well. the yes. Yeah, I mean proportions matter. You yes. I mean? Don't give me the strong ass this no, and I, the other and it's it gotta soft. be like, wow, this is perfect. Mm, like yeah. that. Yeah. You'll, you'll find it. So you'll that, it that is not an alcoholic beverage, though. No, I mean Arnold you could put some rum in there. Yeah, Arnold yeah. Palmer put, was like a. You could put rum. One of them rum. like Smirnoff type shit. I think they, I think that's a John Daly or some shit. Yeah. Like that. yeah I mean, oh, because he was like an alcoholic. Yeah, he was known to like be fucked up on the tour. <laughs> <laughs> now John Daly was <laughs> like the, he was like the portly, I think he got like the, the drunken uh, golfer. Like yeah, yeah. Yo. Fucking throw his clubs and shit. Like, <laughs> like that guy. he was that guy. I don't even know. We might be slandering the motherfucker. Oh, like, nah, but, I know for a fact. This is awesome. I yeah. know that was him. I used to watch Sports Center every morning before yeah. school. John Daly used to be fucking shit up. You know, I just so called him John the, Daly. Was he the one with the pants? The I don't crazy know. I just called that shit? motherfucker Portly. <laughs> Yo, that's, that's crazy. a Portly golfer. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh. motherfucker, fucked up when you started bringing them words out. Like, you be doing crazy shit. That portly gentleman that over portly there. Gentleman. <laughs> well, so, what's you- going on in the world of Clara on the music side? Because I know you <sighs> just dropped the album, Mysterious Shit. Yeah, like, that's another on? collaboration. So, it's actually I'm in a um, artist collective called Tribe Eternal. We're a label and we're an artist collective. So, it's Bilal Abbey. He was actually out there. Pharaoh Lum, who's also a great spitter, and then. Um, a friend of ours named NASA, who does he did most of the beats on the project. Um, we're all like, we didn't even mean to make an album. It was an accident. Really? Yeah. Yes. So what happened was earlier this year, I was just fed up with local rappers and I wanted to talk shit. So like <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just yeah, being honest. We have the yeah. platform to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, me and Bilal went over Nas's crib, and um, he was playing beats, and I wrote a verse, and they looked at me like, "Oh, okay, so we going there?" So then they start like rewriting. Tell us how you really feel. Yeah, yeah. and that's where local celebrity came from. And then um, we started just over the summer, just doing tracks. And Nasa was about to move to New York, and I was like, "Dad, we gotta finish this project." Wait, we're doing a project? It was like, "Yeah, let's do a project." So we just all agreed to do a project. We didn't know the name of it or anything. So the night before my birthday, they wrote me a song called Strawberry Moon. It was the Strawberry Moon. And then that's when we figured out what the name was going to be. It's all on the project. Like, you'll hear the actual snippets. Like, I was just recording stuff. I was like, yo, I got that. I got it. We got the name. And it was just crazy because we didn't expect it. It was like one of the songs on there called Plastic. It's like some Southern bop type shit. And, like, it was for Bilal's mixtape, and then he added NASA. And then I was like, nah, I'm going to be Lil Wayne on there. I'm going to go at the end and be like, wow, it, wow, it, type mm. of shit. <laughs> and, it, <laughs> and it just, it was really natural. It wasn't really super planned out until much later. Um, we dropped the video. The video went up. And then when we dropped the project, it got, like, a lot of attention really fast. Like, it got on an editorial playlist, like, really fast and... Today we just found out we got like 20k streams on Spotify, and I was like, "Yes, it's less than a month." On that. I was like, "Yes." We got to get into that conversation of how artists like what are the metrics that matter exactly. to an artist? Because yeah. I I don't know. Like for yeah. me, when I listen to music, 
It's just what I like. And one thing that I've always liked about mm-hmm. you and, and appropriately named the the, the the collaboration is Aura. You've just yeah. got a good feel around you. It's just like a down home, like chill feel. Like you can go from the R&B oh. to the wobbly wobble. Yeah. And, that, and you want that range when, you, when you're when dealing with a fit. You want yeah. that range. You know what I'm saying? You want like, fun. When you're dealing with people, you like that range. Like that yeah. Aura, that vibe is always cool. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So, even, in, even in your voice, like you could tell like you had, like you know what I mean? Like you... You you got range like a motherfucker oh. you know, because it's it's Thanks. you know the cadences the versatility or whatever yeah. it's, it's almost it's it's, there's, it's always like lurking in the background like you are always on the edge of breaking out like into a song so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh she got that sweet out boo yeah they, sweet out boo <laughs> like every it was just like is this oh, is she gonna carry that is she yeah. just gonna hold that motherfucker for a minute like just, just hold that just hold it right there yeah. Yeah, like, you know because. You know, like, cause, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, we've had, you know, yeah. like some, you know, a few singers in the band, you know, and yeah. it's kind of that that same thing. And I feel like mm-hmm. that carries in, like, wow, you don't even, you don't really even, maybe, I don't know if you know it, do you? Like, or like, is that do you do you notice how people kind of react around you, giving mm-hmm. you cadence? Do you like, do you practice in the wild, like, trying to, you know what I mean, <laughs> like, and then bring it to stage? Like, how do you, how, like, you know, how how does your art form as as a, as a mm-hmm. how do you tune your Mm-hmm. instrument and your mm-hmm. voice oh uh, well first i had to accept that i have a deep voice i used to hate the undertone of my voice like i used to want like a i don't even know how to do it but i wanted like a hi da, 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 like a soprano type shit. yeah like i used to want like a mariah carey like i can hit those notes but i had mm-hmm. to embrace my um singers will call it a chest voice so your talking voice is always like from here and I didn't want to embrace that. I wanted to keep it. A mixed voice is like, it sits like between like your throat and your nose. And I always wanted to talk like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, it's and all then, that's, air. That's your white voice. It's, all, it's the interview voice. Yeah, the yeah, interview but, voice is your mid, you know what I mean? But like, the <laughs> person that helped me feel comfortable with that is like Nina Simone and like, just Anita Baker, um, Tony Shout Braxton. Anita, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Billy Holiday, like singers like uh-huh. that. I would just listen to how different their sound is. They're not really like super technical. They're really just soul singers. Mm. So I was like, let me embrace that and just deal with it. So why why I wonder why and I guess I've never said this aloud, but now that I think about it, because mm-hmm. we had um we had Femi's manager on uh mm-hmm. I don't want to mispronounce the name Clarissa. Crisera. 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 Yeah, yeah. And so she had the same like deep and like women yeah. with deep voice, that's like a a weird, like attractive, like turn on <laughs> thing, like that I, that we don't speak of, but yeah. when you have that, and we spoke to her about like it provides, it's calm. It provides range. It's, yeah, it's yeah. calming. It does. Yeah, you know I mean, it's not like yo, I'm sitting here talking to my man's and nothing. Yeah, but it's a it different is like vibe. I'm saying talking to my man's in the sense that yo, this is a person that I can vibe with. You know right. what I'm saying? I feel like, you. I feel you. So it's it's interesting to hear that you don't embrace that because it's not. I didn't at first. Not, I love it now. Well, yeah, but yeah. It, it's not that your voice sounds masculine. Yeah. It just has like a rumble to well, it. And I it sounded soothing, like this though. when it's, I was it's eight. Like a, like a, <laughs> okay. It, it's your, like your a, voice was mad deep at eight for this. <laughs> I was eight. watching a home tape. I was watching this home tape with my little Pocahontas cake. Yo, mom, you know what's up with that cakes? broccoli though? Yeah. <laughs> You know, ex- yo, I literally, you know, them cakes they used to actually put paper on top. I hated those back in the day. They used to actually put paper, like print the paper. It's so freaking stupid. So I'm like, hey, yo, who gonna cut the cake? Because I really, I'm like, I'm hungry. Who, are we gonna like this cake? I was like, who is this grown woman rushing this kid about this cake? And then it pans over and it's me, like, mom, yo, gotta, where the cake at? I'm like, yo, yo I gotta go potty. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta go potty real quick. I always had a de- like one of my singer the one of the singers I used to emulate a lot as a kid was Brandy because her voice was deep, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and yeah. I was like, "Yo, okay, baby, 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 baby." Like I would just yeah. be able to, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I could th- and, you know so and T Boz was one of my biggest influences. Man, let too. me tell you something about T Boz, mm-hmm. all right? Because okay. I was. So okay. T Boz to me, because we we used to do like a little oh. as as young, you okay. know, you would rank the group. So mm-hmm. you know, everybody mm-hmm. was all in love with Chili, but I was like, look, left eye got my A1, but T Boz 
See, See I was running, slept on a little damn bit. Damn, running neck and neck. I mean, okay. My, my, my kid is, my kid is like, you know, unfortunately, she, you know, she mm-hmm. got her daddy's, her daddy's, you know what I mean, vocals. So your she's got to. Your shit too yeah, deep. Yeah, she, she's, no, she's got the, like the deep, she's like still not really ready to accept it yet. Like, she'll, she'll you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. But, it's cool because you but, can talk and be like, yo, what's up? You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's, a, like, it's like you said, it's, it's, it's that, it's that calming, like. <laughs> It's like like the grandma calm that where it's like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like when when yeah. when she say everything will be all right, it's like, oh I believe well, shit. I, yeah, be I believe cool. with yeah, the I believe in myself more. She, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> Life is good. <laughs> whatever, whatever you say. Did you, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just cultivated that and I just like embraced it and I loved on it, you know. Sometimes you just the thing that you hate the most, if you love it, it actually is the thing that will cat- catapult you into a place you didn't think you can get to. Hey, unique. So, it's unique. Yeah, and a lot of people don't like the thing that makes them unique because you stand out and it takes strength. So, mm-hmm. like for a long time when I was younger, I was like, "Nah, everybody else got these light, runny voice, like ooh, ooh, and all that stuff." And I'm sitting here like, "Boom, boom, 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 boom," and all that. Stuff. Oh my gosh, shit! But yeah, I came around to it, and yeah, now the rest is history. I'm doing my thing. I mean, so what, are you, what is what's your? I mean, where do, where do you pull your influence from? I mean, I mean, because you've named you know quite yeah, a few I mean, folks. You know, I and am it's like a music nerd yeah. to my core. I like were you were like we like was it always cultivated as a youth? Like, did your, mm. did your parents put you in it? Or did they have a background? Like, you know, like where did you? <sighs> Here come the cliche was the, story. Was it was it through the through the church? <laughs> I was about to yeah. say I came up in the church. <laughs> yeah, came up. Nah. Um, Honestly, my mom was a renaissance artist, so she was very hood. Love my mom. You know what I'm saying? R.I.P. mama. But she used to paint. Like, you see how that big thing right there is, that little drop? She used to paint paintings that big in the crib. Yeah. And she would be playing jazz records. Murals. Yes. So I'd be listening to Johnny Hartman and Nat King Cole and, Mm. you know, John Coltrane, um, Art Bakley, um, Dizzy Gillespie, um, Hurry, Hancock, uh, Sade, and then she would have the Eagles on. Yeah. You got to throw that. That's that one curveball. But you know what? Respect the curveball, though. Yeah. Because I think one thing that I, I lack in life is there was, you know, you in Cleveland, yeah. I don't want to blame it on the city, but like you grow up in a certain neighborhood, they don't, they don't, op- they're not open to variants. They're yeah. not open to and eagles being played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Dude, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah, yeah like, what the fuck is she doing? What, turn that sudden, shit on. What the artistry mean? comes from that, though. Yeah, so my mom was really eclectic with music. Like, she had a record collection. Marvin Gaye mm. was, like, heavenly in the house. Like, yeah. I love Marvin. Respect, respect. Um, he just, like, the fact that he would freestyle a lot of his work was really interesting to me. Did mm. not know that. No. Yeah, he was... <sighs> See, that's I love Michael Jackson, Marvin. of course, everybody yeah. loved Michael Jackson, but I love Michael Jackson, not really... His music, don't get me wrong, bomb. <sighs> yeah. His creative direction is what inspired me as a kid. Mm. Like, I was watching the thriller... Uh, behind the scenes as a kid like way after it came out and they would always put it on because for some reason back in the day they would put back reruns on like, yeah all the- yeah no i definitely watched the thriller i'm like when did this day. come out yeah. Dang, this is 10 years later yeah it's true. Like, i'm like this shit older than me yeah like this I'm like, what? I'm like he don't look like that no more but anyway so like, i'm like why is he brown is he light-skinned i'm confused so, that is wild as hell. It was to weird. see a motherfucker like not Yo, like he older, like yeah, the motherfucker is just a different, different nigga. Person. Like, yeah, different yeah, face, like, man. Like what, Mike with the new face. Yeah, like yeah. Thriller and Bad Michael was two yeah. different. Mark. He got his bands up. Yo, and he just totally yeah. moonwalking on. Left. But I was just watching his creative direction. I was amazed by how like intricate he was and like how serious he was. So that motivated me to do that with my projects and work as a young kid. Mm. Like, so there's a lot of stuff I've seen in artists. I could literally sit here for two hours and talk about all the artists that was perfect. We got one hour and we would love <laughs> to. No, nah, because, you know, I always respect. Sade is a big um, one, by the way. She's so, my mom. I call her my mom. Yeah. So people yeah. with the the musical, when they go yeah. with the music artistry, I, I've always been very respectful because mm-hmm. to a certain extent, there is, there's that intrinsic gift. Like, all right, you got it a little bit. But yeah. like you said, to tune that instrument is different because... To be able to sing, Ooh. but to know what to sing, mm. those are two different things. Get your, like, yeah. get your karaoke down right. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. you gotta like, know where you sitting at. Yeah, and, and I'm and I'm interested in how you decide. Mm. You know what? So I don't know if 
do people come to R&B artists with beats? <laughs> Is that a rapper thing? But like, how do you decide, um, one, like, here's the subject matter of the song I'm yeah, going to yeah, do, yeah. but also, all right, within that subject matter, I need a certain vibe, because, yeah. you know, you got to have the right vibe. Like, you can't be singing a militant song, but you be <laughs> all happy type shit. Like, you can do uh, it, but it has yeah, to be done yeah, well. well. Yeah, yeah, and it has to be did done that well, shit. you know yeah, what I'm saying? Shit, well. Kendrick did it, and I, I don't always give him credit, because y'all, yeah. we had this thing, but like that, all right, it yeah. had a message, but but yeah, it's, yeah, those, yeah, those yeah. are gems where you can have that yeah, upbeat exactly. feel mm -hmm. and have the message. Yeah. And with R&B, there could be so many different messages, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And yeah. like, what's really going now with the R&B is like, mm -hmm. the women, they t with the vibe, like you got yeah. the, the Summer Walkers, the yeah. Scissors, you know what I'm saying? Like, they got this whole little vibe around yeah. Them. And if you go through a man iTunes, we we bopping that shit too. Yeah. It might not be like when our man's is in the car, yeah. but once I drop my daughter off, I got a twelve well, minute commute that one to work. On one? I might have a scissor bang. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Really... And y'all doing it with that. So like, yeah. how do you decide? Like, here's the song I'm gonna sing. Here's what yeah. we're gonna do, and then how I need to sound on it. Well, for me personally, um, I'm extremely um, involved in everything, so I study people. Like, I actually, for Aura, for example, um, I had a whole different project before, and then that got scrapped, just personal life. The, I was in a, another relationship with a producer. I was like, nah, I ain't using your beats, nigga. Fuck you. So... <laughs> you, you was Summer Walker for real. Fuck you, nigga. Yeah, London exactly. The track. <laughs> no, fuck that, fuck that. <laughs> and then um, this producer, shout out to Urell, um, he sent me a beat, and it was actually, it was actually the intro for the project. At first, um, and I was like, yo, I'm about to chop this up and turn this into like a segmented thing. And then I um, hit him up. I was like, bro, I think you have what I'm looking for to convey what I'm trying to say. So I just went over his house. He had hundreds of beats. And I sat there and we just went through them. I was like, can you speed that up to this BPM? Can you do this? Can you do that? And then it got to a point where he just was like, here's the stems. Just you do it. So he yeah. would just send me everything. And I arranged Mm. The whole thing, you know what I mean. I'm very particular, <laughs> super particular. <laughs> I'm like, listen, <laughs> the drum. We're gonna take this out. I'm gonna put some ocean waves in here. I'm gonna do a poem right here. I'm gonna do the vocals of pan to the so, left, pan over here. Bilal actually mixed it for me, but I was like, all right, so we're gonna have the pan. We're gonna have my voice come down like this, like a sweeping across. Mm. But why is that difficult? Like, I feel like if yeah. I'm producing some shit and I already, and I have. <laughs> very pointed mm. direction yeah. that it's easier to do or is it just is that difficult on an ego thing like I made a beat I want this beat to sound this way like what where's No the I think it's more like he's like you you like it's like if the artist sees it really clear they'll just trust you enough to be like here it's like yeah, a trust thing. Yeah, well, like a collaboration. Yeah, you know so mean? it's like, like, oh, I already I did this, this so part, here you, you have... your part, and then mm -hmm. you mean, like, but where do you learn to do all this shit, man? Well, I learned to do it because I actually, um, when I was in high school, I just was like on musician's friend. <laughs> and I was like, fuck it, I'm getting my own equipment. So I got my own like computer. I had two jobs at the time. My mom was really sick. So I was working a lot and trying to keep up the apartment while she was in the hospital. And I was like, I'm gonna just do music before I go. To I took a year off before I went to college in Columbia. And I just learned how to record myself. And I learned how to like I was just on the internet learning mm -hmm. how to do all this shit by myself. Yeah, and, and I was like and Google. And Yep. And shout out to DJ Huggy because when I was in uh, ID Labs when I was really young, it was like when Edan and Huggy just got ID Labs, there was this group called Creative Liberation and we got to see how people record, how they mix, how they master, how they do all that stuff. And that was back when Wiz was just like Cam right. and there was like... um Boaz and all of them, they were going back and forth with bars and I was like, yeah, I was just, I'm like a sponge. I sit and observe and I just watch everything. I'd be like, do, 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 do. <laughs> so I was just watching everybody do stuff. So I took all the things I've learned, all the things I've absorbed, all the influences, and just like, it just came to a point, and that's where Aura came from. And I just collaborate with people. And I just have fun. How backstories be way more like <laughs> So they'd be like, how you get the comedy? Yo, so somebody was like, yo, you funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so interesting. Yeah, it's like, you funny, so you should go tell jokes. I was like, yeah, let me try it. Yeah, let me give it a try. I've been telling jokes ever since. Uh, <laughs> I just been always, I've always had it on my mind to do it, but I just knew it was going to take a long time. I'm not one of those people that's like, yeah, I'm going to be an overnight 
viral sensation. I knew it was going to take a long time for me to get to the level of like a Marvin Gaye or like a Stevie Wonder. Because that's my goal. Okay. Mm. I'm not really worried about my age or anything like that. I'm more so worried about making sure I make product and make music that resonates and has longevity. So We'll learn more about this in a moment. Looking for training in a new career or just need help getting started on a new path? Are you looking for new employees, training for your current employees, or starting your own apprenticeship program? If any of these appeal to you, the Southwest Corner Workforce Development Board can help. With four Pennsylvania career link centers in Beaver, Green, and Washington counties, we can help you meet your career goals or to find the right employees for your business. Contact our offices at 724-229-5083 or visit us at www.southwestcornerwdb.com. So, yeah. you know, how, you know, a, a, <laughs> a lot of a lot of the, the issues and the critiques in the industry is that yeah. it takes a lot of artists, say, a lifetime to produce that first mm -hmm. thing, that first album. I mean, mm -hmm. and you get that success and then it's like you have to create that same thing in a year yeah. you know what I mean like you know like do you have it like you know what I mean so like how you know how like I guess you know like how do you what is what's your what's your plan like mm -hmm. in it like you know I mean are you looking like you know I mean are you do you have something like you're, you're trying to drop projects you know you have folks like you know say PK he's mm -hmm. dropping like a different song every every, every day, day I you know, know what I mean in a crazy. year yeah you know I mean like or you know like you know something like you know, is it like, you know, once every couple of years or, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, or whatever, like, you know, what, 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 what is the schedule that you're putting Ooh. out and how are you basing your, you know, how are you basing that? I mean, I'm going to try to tell y'all as much as I can without revealing, cause I'm, mm. I'm like, I like to keep things secret okay. cause oh, secret wow, and wow. sacred is the same thing well, to me. We're not a secret. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> we apologize for no, 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 no. interviewing no, you. Say, say how you feel. So this is what's happening. No, um, <laughs> no, but you're absolutely right. Cause um, actually Aura has always, like I had a 10 year plan when I was like 20. But it was in 20, music. Yo. Listen, listen. <laughs> it was 20, in dog. music. I had a 10 hour plan. Bro. A 10 hour plan. I had, 20, I had like I a like, 10 yo. year plan. I was like, all right, all right. So by this time, luckily if I'm if I'm still here, I want to really like get to a certain point. So I was getting to the end of that plan. I was like, well, I need to drop an album. I don't know why I'm thinking. Like sometimes you'll get so caught up in the perfection side, mm. you won't drop anything. You'll feel like you're not good enough to mm. do something because oh, this got to be here. Just it's loud. The, it's the fear, the 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 the, the imposter lot. syndrome. Yeah, that, you, know you gotta mean? you gotta, you gotta have gotta it fail a little bit, but yeah. also succeed in certain. Like it's it's that. So I got over that, but. For me, I've always had like different project ideas and they're finally manifesting. So I actually have a lot from now until like 2025 planned. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So <laughs> So let me ask let me ask you this though, because a lot of artists I know, like if you talk to a lot of artists, they'll say that some of them that I know that y'all probably already, you know, listen to. But I, I so one, mm. how how stringent are people to those plans? Because music mm. is ever evolving. And yes. two, is the industry such that maybe now mm -hmm. the perfectionist, mm -hmm. you know, aspect of it doesn't ha necessarily have to be? Because yeah. the the music that's popular now, yeah. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, dispel any of their input or artistry mm -hmm. and such. But I feel like people just they're basically a lot of times throwing shit at the wall see what sticks Facts. you know what I mean like motherfuckers is producing a bunch of shit yep. we don't know what to do and I know Patty LaBelle just had the, the yeah. quote out about it doesn't have any substance and whatnot. And I don't mm. want to say that I just think people live differently yeah. uh, the lifestyle is to, is, is to be more free yeah. more free flowing fluid type of shit so mm -hmm. why, that would obviously reflect in the artistry like mm -hmm. I don't have to have this whole you know, cultivated arrangement of 12 to 16 songs. It's like, yeah. yo, this is what I felt in the moment. And a lot of what was happening in R&B too. Yeah. Like when you see a SZA, you see a Her, you see mm -hmm. a, you know what I'm saying, a Summer Walker, just for example, mm -hmm. it's a lot of feel music. 
it's yeah. it's how you feel they felt at the time. So yeah. that 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 album doesn't have to be relevant to that artist mm-hmm. twelve years from now. But there's someone who's going to feel that way twelve years from now, and I feel like it Vibes. can still can it can still grow. So like with mm-hmm. with you being such a perfectionist, do you have to like acquiesce to like yo? Know, I just got to throw some shit out there just to see what happened because that's yeah. what motherfuckers is doing. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't think I can do that to be honest. <laughs> I've tried it; it doesn't work. <laughs> Like I, I'm I don't too think there's inv- wrong with that. No, like there's people that can literally just be like, I'm gonna make a song about freaking towels in the bathroom. <laughs> towels in the bathroom. <laughs> towels in the bathroom. <laughs> but that's squeak, 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 your squeak, life. nigga. <laughs> Even like, <laughs> but that should affect your life. And I'm like, you got towels, towels after you wash your hands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do I towels. do I touch the towel after another nigga wash his hands? You soap. Know, soap. Get water. the soap. Yeah, exactly. Is there a towel to wipe my nuts? Like it's you know a bunch saying? of different uses for so soap. It's, no, I actually appreciate stuff towels like that. In the back. Towel, towels in the back. Towels in the back. What? 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 Oh, so I hate the wall bars. Towels, swat, bitch. Swat, step your swat, towel, swat, towel swat, game up. Scratch your knee. Scratch your TM, TM. Copyright, copyright. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I feel like there's a space for everything, honestly. I feel like there's a space for artists that just want to have fun with music and they don't take it serious. And I also feel like I'm both, to be honest. I'm okay. not going to always make things. Like, to me, Mysterious shit was that for me. Because I had fun. I was sitting in the, yo, I was sitting in the seat on plastic. Like, don't need no fake ass niggas on no fake ass hoes. Pull it up. Like, I was just having that fun. That feels real. Yeah. Because it is mm-hmm. real. With the backstory of the relationship yeah. with the producer. And I was like, okay. like, mysterious shit yeah. was fun. And I got to do <laughs> it with. Bob and them and them. Was like, already. And like, we was just. Tell me more about not needing these motherfuckers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because mysterious shit for us was just like, all tell of us was more, huddled in a moment. More. And we were like, all right, so. We're going to just talk our shit. Because yeah. cause honestly, it was inspired by DJ Khaled and his whole like little rant in his car. Like, I'm in cars and, you know, people playing my music in, in the hotels. They playing music <laughs> in the stadium. Not no mysterious shit. And we were like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> So we just came together. We made all types of records that we liked. That's the first time I, I've ever heard someone be inspired. <laughs> DJ I, will, I respect him, though. I see. No, I went. I went to the On the That's Run tour too, and he was like the opening act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's a special. There's a certain segment of DJism or DJ yeah. artistry that can allow for you to be a DJ yeah. in that room when mm-hmm. it's coming to see Jay Z and Beyonce. Yep. You're an opening act, but yep. you got to play the music mm-hmm. and have the energy. To that gets people to he stay within the energy, show honey. before that that those two come out because ain't nobody like that's not a show you want to open for. Yeah, <laughs> from the from the from the yeah, you look at the volume of individuals by the yeah. tickets that would be great as far as exposure. Yeah. But nobody give a fuck about that opening act. Ooh. But Khaled got there and he kind of you he know made sense. But I, mm-hmm. but then there's also the part of Cat Khaled that's like, come on, nigga. Like, he be like notorious. Yeah, I'm the tired. The audacity to see. I'm tired of him. I ain't gonna lie. I am I tired got the of him. I'm so tired of him. Yes. But I, I, I hope he keeps going. But I'm so tired. Another of him. one. <laughs> but I don't want that. Another one. I don't. Another one. I know I don't. Again. Stop it. Congratulations. No. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> <laughs> when he did the video, when he no. did the video, when he did the video, he was like, "You smart, <laughs> you, you loyal, you loyal, <laughs> you got class, maybe." I'm like you, are- I don't know. <laughs> like oh, what? This dude's a whole asshole. <laughs> yes, absolutely loyal. Like, <laughs> shout out to Cali. Like, corny <laughs> niggas got to win too. They get, they need they they need, the corny niggas need they Jay Z. They <sighs> yeah. need the corny man. Be you know what I mean? He came a long way from Shotters, boy. Wow, y'all know what's up with it. He came a long way. From, like, it's like he came belly a long way from Taylor's Terror Squad. Yeah, he shot us. He was like an afterthought Terror Squad. Like, that, I'm sorry, we giving him too much. Anyway, but I go to listen to mysterious shit chest. if you want to hear some your, fun um, shit. What's your what's your favorite what's your favorite line? <gasps> from what? Mysterious. mysterious. Oh, from mysterious shit. Yeah. Um. In the lab, in the moment around that. Um, actually, it's a Bilal bar, and it's address me as Big B, and don't you mind what I do. <laughs> he yo. said, "Address me as Big B, and don't you mind what I do." I was yo. like, "Yo, I wish my name started with a B." My last name is Bailey. I might fuck around. <laughs> exactly. I might pull that out on somebody. <laughs> 
Dress in the whip. If you say address me to somebody, yeah, yeah that's a different and level. Don't you that's mind a, what and I don't do. you mind what I do? That's an old head, like yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's a, classic. Yeah, that's a, that's a son. Yeah, that's definitely, yeah. That's definitely somebody. what James Brown was coming to tell his wife. Don't you mind what I do? Don't you mind what I do? Hey! <laughs> sure. Address me as Big that's B. That's an uncle. From now on, I'm saying That's an uncle bar. Big B. I need a warm towel every time I get oh, home. Oh, and shout out to, to Nice Wreck for killing the beats on there, too. He gave it. He, yo, Nice Wreck, let me tell you something. That is a funny, funny man. Pete will act like... You would never think he just... First of all, he got nominated for a Grammy. You would never know. <laughs> what? He did... Um, What's the Dreamville 3? Mm-hmm. The record with the baby and J. Cole and all them. Yeah, yeah. And he's just like, mm, don't look at oh, me. Oh, oh. I I'm just like, put diamonds all over my team. You probably think I ain't intelligent. Yep. Okay, yeah. So yeah, he yeah. did two tracks on the record for us. Um, One of them actually, like NASA and Bilal... They both wanted the record separately, but they end up collaborating on it and putting it on the record. And it's called Mass. It's really dope. So, yeah, mysterious shit. So, Listen like, shit. how do you feel about Pittsburgh's and its its uh, contribution to urban music? Because I, I I will say, and and I hate to give Pittsburgh props, but I have to. Like, <laughs> you guys. Low key be involved in some shit like yeah, back facts. door be having like some influential shit going and like just to hear that you know what I mean like to mm-hmm. have like yo he was on the Dreamville with the ba- and ba- yeah. the baby like he just did the bop on Broadway shit like everybody I can't that. stop doing the baby dance I need some shit with some mm-hmm. baby yeah. like yo yeah like so it's like but that's a new that's a different like style different wave of yeah. music than yeah. before because I don't even know how to describe his shit because it's not like. It ain't like the mumble shit that niggas was talking about. Yeah, ago, he has like this triplet style that's in a five yeah, count. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's weird. It's he, wow. But yeah, y'all in there too. He, like, you're like, yeah. yo, yo, yeah. Heard her with the, it's so like he be talking and he just be logging them. It's like, whoa. Yeah, you no, know, he, yeah, he got that. He, he also switches it up and he's a lyricist. Yes. He's, he's, yeah, I mean, he's not switching up. Yeah, but he is, mean? he does. Yeah, what do you mean? Baby, he's got a couple of cadences. He does like It's like a hop scotch flow a little bit. Where it's like, the baby be. This it's a shit, double dash flow to this me. This shit be, yeah. and that's not. I even, mean, I can't. I mean, he dropped two of them, and in those and two, be, I heard maybe two songs. And, yeah, and, but if I you like heard the, the other but seventeen songs, it was this the same. And it's not even a. But I don't even say that as a knock. That's his thing. That's where yeah. he's going. Actually, he's addressed it on. Uh, what song is it that where he addressed like niggas be saying like he don't change his flow? But at the end of the day, why do you have to change your flow? Mm-hmm. Well, what, don't people eventually just kind of like just get burnt out? Because you, but people aren't dropping traditional albums anymore either. I was gonna say, <laughs> being that everything is in our hands now, it's like all our creative ideas we could just put them out. Kind of like what you were saying head. before, people are throwing stuff at the wall, seeing what sticks. I'm a little more of a mix of both. Like, mm-hmm. I'll do that, but I don't do it publicly. I'll do it and I'll bring it amongst friends. I'll send links to people and they'll tell me, like, ah, you know, da da da. And then I'll. But I think what I'm speaking to is yeah. more akin to the rap genre yeah, yeah, than yeah. the R&B. Because I, I feel like you're getting more classic R&B albums. Like, you're getting more like yeah. that control, that that Summer Walker. Like, the hurt, those shits are like, yo, yeah. these got. These are going to this album's gonna rock for a while. For a while, maybe yeah, like yeah, you got yeah. Bob, you got gospel, you yeah. got some tracks on there that you like. Yeah, but yeah. you're not necessarily worrying about the album. The album, yeah. gonna, you don't have to do that with rap anymore. Though, like even Fab, nah, I, like I, Fab I, I, just I dropped bombs. That, I, I, I think the I think the baby's album, album is 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 dope. Like that, the second dip, the one that he just did. I mean, whatever, like the, all those tracks, just you could just let yeah. that shit ride all. Yeah. Yeah. Like, wait, like, which one? The one with him with the blue hat on. Blue hat. That shit is no, 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 no. No, the one with his, no, the one on his, was, with his uh, daddy on it. And yeah, Kirk. Oh, I mean, Kirk. For, yeah, Kirk. Kirk with Bob. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just I, like that. But I, I don't see yeah. any variance in flow on that. But it's short enough, Ooh. and again, it came. I out. like the hooks. The, the hooks are a little, yeah, you know I mean, okay. and then you got a little couple of little gems with some motherfuckers that'll drop in. You know I mean? but, but you're talking about ten. Yeah. Ten song album. Those yeah. aren't yeah. albums. They, they ain't Thank like, you yeah, for anymore. saying it's that. Quick. Cause what? Okay, not to be an R&B nerd, but when uh, Destiny's Child for Phil came out, it was a big deal that they only had ten tracks. People, that was unheard of back yeah. then. If you had seventeen tracks, that was an album. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, ten tracks. That's not an album. What's People, the what was on that one? Uh, I'm a soldier. Um, cater to you. 
What else is on there? Cater to you. Let me cater to you, cause baby, this is your day. I was in high school around that time. Yeah, Yeah. I'm a soldier, and then then lose my breath. High school shot cook for they mans with the cater to you. I'm like, girl, you better make the fuck. (laughs) They was making Velveeta and shit. (laughs) He put broccoli in the Velveeta. (laughs) They would slice. They used to make the hot dog and cut the hot dog down the middle. I'm like, go ahead, man. You got it. Yo, mama gonna be mad. You know them stamps is low. Oh shit. Yo, we got bars today. <laughs> you know, I mean, you gotta know who you fucking with. Like, them stamps is low. That's them cool. Them stamps That's is low. low. Shout outs to the stamps. Yeah, okay, so, so you, they you're only not, get you're not 10 a fan of the 10 out. The, the 10, you know what I mean? Which is, what? Like, no, no. I, okay, so I'm just saying, like, it changed. Like, I noticed in RB, it changed. Like, People thought it was a big deal. And then I started slowly over that, from that time on, it became more common to have 12 to 13 records. Mm-hmm. And then now, even with streaming, it had like the reason why people only do 10 songs is because if you do a hundred and I think it's like 1500 streams equals one album purchase. Yeah. So people are like, okay, I'm going to reduce the amount of songs to kind of get more streams for this record. Yeah. That's the only reason yeah, why people nah, do that. Yeah, listening to some, some music podcasts, and they get into the business of yeah, it with the streams. Yeah, it's wild. It's like, it's different. it's kind of blending in between that. Because before, that used to be like an EP if you had seven songs. Yeah. But why, why? so as an artist, mm-hmm. why why 17 songs? Like, why would you? Because well, if you got 17, if you yeah. have a 17-song album that yeah. I'm listening through like that, yeah. That's that's a classic album. You know what I mean, but yeah. like if you have ten songs and I and I rock with six, yeah, that's a really good album. Well, back in the day, people would come out work. with an album like once every three to four years. So, so where's it now? Is it like two? People years? come out with an album every year now. Well, people not. Eh. Well, well almost. Up, I mean, Rihanna, she was like bang. Bang. But how many tracks of Rihanna <laughs> shit? And I fucked with Rihanna, but like yeah. when you listen to them albums, how many of the Rihanna tracks was you really, really banging with? But even and it then, could be me. Even then, that even then, Rihanna. I love unapologetic. Just, Rihanna, Rihanna, Rihanna I do. isn't just That's, in the Get lab. It Over With is definitely the best smoke with your girl song. Give me a high five. Yo, Ugh. bro, if you ain't smoke with your girl to get Yo, it over that with, shit, you are missing out. I was out. playing Tomb but Two <laughs> on my PlayStation. Don't get judge me. I like old with. games. I was like, don't even get it over with. I see you rolling it. In the club, it's, that yo, shit goes. Yo. It's, yeah. it's yeah. a ride. We it's playing Spyro and shit. It's on my. It's on my smoking <laughs> list. It's playing Crash Bandicoot yo, and shit. Smoke with your girl. Get yeah. it over with. Y'all gonna no. have a good night. Yeah. If, if y'all argue with, just throw it on. Get it yeah. over it's, with. It's on the smoking list with uh with Mystical. I see you rolling in. Exactly. That shit go, man. Yeah. That shit go. That shit goes. But yeah, like I, seven. Like I don't need seventeen songs because I. Most the way we listen to music now too, like mm-hmm. because you're not doing the physical CD anymore, you can mm-hmm. go from artist to artist. Yeah. I'm not listening to an album all the way through a lot of times. Like it's, a lot yeah, of times, people... I'm jumping to the shit that I like because I can do it. Because mm-hmm. back in the day when I had to go to another CD to... and then, nah, I can't listen yeah, to another yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, it's just yeah. who I'm listening to right now. Yeah, I feel. So I, I actually, man, like I got so I pirate uh, Spotify. And mm-hmm. I mean, like, you funny. You know, so you know. <laughs> You can Y'all, pirate Spotify? Yeah, you know, you, it's, it's a cracked app. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, it's just pirating. You, know, right, you can well, pirate it. Don't get show caught like, up now. You can pirate that shit. Well, but, all right. Well, we'll, you know, anyway. You, you can probably just endorse that shit. The streams still, you know, the streams still go to they do what they, they, they do, what they do um, for the artists or whatever, but Yo, I just funny. ain't got it. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, but... I like the album. I like the shorter format because it allows yeah. me to put it on. Mm-hmm. It'll be, you know, 25 minutes, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? 30, like it's a quick commute. I yeah. can just digest that on the way in, you know what I mean? Or whatever and mm-hmm. good to go, you know? And and, mm-hmm. and, it, and if it allows you to, you know, release them more often so that I'm like, you know what I mean? Because at times I'm not going, like if you have that 17 and you're doing it over like, you yeah. know, two years, Mm-hmm. I'm not even going. I mean, half of those I'm really not going to listen to. It's going to come out. If something else is going. Some to come people out, get intimidated out. seeing that many tracks on an album. Now yeah. they're like, "Oh, that's a listen." Okay, hold up. I because people are moving faster. They have a lot more on their schedules. A lot of us are yeah. entrepreneurs. A lot of us are just. It's a lot on our plate, especially with you know. There's a lot of social economic things with that too, but making shorter albums it kind of just fits with the time now. Yeah, I feel does. like 
the longer, larger releases are for the larger artists. Yeah. You know, like a Drake, a Beyonce. Even Beyonce had a short dip. Like, yeah. Uh, them other, uh, she, yeah, Lemonade was short pretty dips. short. Yeah. <laughs> but like a lot of larger artists will have the more traditional album, but they're not coming out every year. Or you have to come out with a visual project yeah. that mm. people will be like, oh, okay. Because when Beyonce's Beyonce album Shout came out, Beyonce she had that. like 14 yeah. tracks, but it was like, okay, this whole visual project is dope. I want to watch. It was a movie. Yeah. She, yeah. she did a Yeah, she came out with the movie first and yeah. then the album, you know, yeah. so it was yeah. like, okay, this I'm is I'm in dope. the Yonce household too. My, my daughter is- <laughs> The house of Yonce. Definitely. Uh, my, her her mother has, has you know, yeah. she got into it. And then you know what? I'm going to tell you, and I've said this before, but like I appreciate her because mm -hmm. her music is digestible for a father taking his daughter to school. Like I, yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. feel yeah. like ah she want to listen to Beyonce. Like I can fuck with it. You yeah, know what I mean, like, like I can't do but so much to Seven Eleven, but I can fuck with it. Seven you know what twice, mean? seven twice. Yeah, I can't do but so many of the moves. But my daughter in the backseat <laughs> vibe into it. I and the the, the visual album yeah. concept is, is dope. But I I just like to see how things evolve. I love mm -hmm. to see what y'all doing. And then again, your aura though. I don't think Thank what you. you do, how you do it, will ever go away mm -hmm. because at the end of the day with R and B, you do want to get more into a mood. Yeah. Like with rap, it's I like feeling. the song, but like the R and B mm -hmm. is kind of a bluesy at times. Like it's just like I want a mood. I, yeah. I want to set like a vibe. It's more yeah. vibe music. The music I'm actually making now is a blend of everything. Cause I want people to get into a mood and be mellow, but I also want people to have fun and remember that R and B records were party records at one point. Mm -hmm. People kind of forgot that. Like you used to play them in the club, I'm like, eh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. So I'm trying to bring that sweet back in and y'all hear yeah, that. You one. Seen, you seen hey, that shit do to me. To me. Yeah, cause it's like still feeling, <laughs> but you getting it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Man. Well, you know back in Cleveland, they do like parties that are R and B parties. It, I don't know if that made yo, I went to, to Pittsburgh yet. Yeah, I went to New know. Orleans and they did some crazy stuff to Anita Baker record. And it made me want to dance. I was like, what is yeah. this going? Sweet love. They like did yo, some you sweet dance love. Dude, you gotta oh, do yeah. They did some trap beat shit to that shit. Yeah. She was crazy. <laughs> oh, yo, shit was bopping. My mom used to listen to Rochelle Pharrell. Yes. And like, she low key had like a dope album. Yo, that Rochelle was Anita Baker ish. But nobody like. Yeah, yo. Like, love on the right time. I was like, yo, oh. Rochelle Pharrell had yo. this one album my mom used to listen to all the time. I'm like, is that Anita Baker? She's like, no. But yeah. Yeah, I'm just be like, damn, she cleaning. Her vocal I knew range when she broke up with crazy. somebody because that Rochelle would come on. That Rochelle Pharrell came on. Getting my groove back. I mean, Mike ain't coming back. Mike. <laughs> yo. <laughs> it's, a, it's a rap. <laughs> Fact. Shout out to Sh yo, Rochelle Pharrell taught me how to have breath control. I used she to was good her. with the deep drone too. Yeah. She had the best technical, like her breath control. I was like, okay, this is how you do it. And you exert and then bring it back. Like she had all the drama and color. Oh, what was the joke? Vote. Yeah, true. Yeah, now that shit, that shit was just the go, yo. Yo, Armby's hard. Who's who's the who's the chick that 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 been around the world? Nah, yeah, yeah. Yo, I can't. I remember when I found out that was a white lady. Yeah, my life changed. I just saw that. I saw that. I learned that in like 2013. Yo, I was. I learned that in 2019. This moment. I would. Yo, look up the video. Look up the video. Her name is Lisa something, I think. Yo, it changed my life as a kid. I was looking at the video like, yo, it's a white singer. Yeah, I did. I, that fucked my whole I want to have up. a party where black people do covers of white singers that sound black. <laughs> <laughs> what would you title it? I don't know yet. Zebra? Brown, blue-eyed soul. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> Cream in your coffee? Cream in your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are wild. <laughs> so we got a rap because oh, no, Buzzy's getting antsy. I, I know. I'm so, I see. It. He was like, he was like, hold up now. Y'all talking too damn much. Oh, it's, 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 it's Thanksgiving week. Everybody, hey. off, everybody off. So it's party feel time. It. Yeah. I feel I'm it. Ready I feel to, it. I'm ready to party. Hey, yeah, so. I'm definitely going over to my cousin's house. I'm excited. Yes. I, cousins are your first friends. Yes. So please let the people know where they Facts. can find you, what they need to look out for. I know you Facts. got a couple big shows coming mm -hmm. up uh, at the turn of the year, so yeah. let them know. What's, we just missed your last, Joan, on the 13th. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's we, uh, cool. The turn of the year, you got dope. a couple uh, couple, uh, couple big shows coming up, so yeah. let them know where they can find you, where they can mm -hmm. find you, know, you live, yeah. uh, and why they should listen to you. All right, cool. So you can find me at TravEternal.com. You can also find me on all social media programs at 
or programs. Wow. At I am Clara Kent, C L A R A K E N T, like Clark Kent, but Clara Kent. You feel me? Mm. Um, everywhere. I am Clara Kent. You should listen to me because I speak from the heart, I speak truth, and I'm that nigga. Also, oh, <laughs> also, um, we got a new album out called Mysterious Shit. It's dope. It has a variety of sounds on it from vaporwave, RB to to bounce hip hop, all that good shit. Listen to Aura. It's going crazy. I don't know why all of a sudden it spiked up crazy this month, but it's going crazy. You can find it everywhere. Um, I have a show January 4th at Club Cafe with Inez and Simone Davis. Dope R&B singers. Bring your girl. Bring, you know, somebody that's kind of your girl. Bring your guy. Bring whoever. Um, And also, Starship Man is at uh, Spirit Hall, February 29th, Leap Year. Their last show. Come That's out. Gonna crazy, it's going to be bro. crazy. You can find all of this on my social media. Just follow me. Just follow me. Just follow me. I am Clara Kent. Boom. 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 Let them know where they can find us, Day. Hey, uh, <laughs> we are the Drinking Partners. And if you're looking for us, you can find us on epicastnetwork.com hey. slash partners pod. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Lips, and Google Play, and Spotify under Drinking Partners. You can find us on IG, Twitter, and Facebook at Partners Pod. And listen, we want to thank our guest Claire Kent for coming through. Now I'm thank you I'm, for I'm, me. I'm about to go with like make make a list of like my favorite deep <laughs> deep voice yeah. singer R and B. Send it to me, cause I, yo, cause True. there be some sleepers, yo. Like I was thinking about Facts. Michelle Farrell. I'm like, yo, yeah. these don't be yeah. no Tony Mich- Braxton. Yo, Tony. But then it'd be like these like Michelle yeah. Nick. I don't even know how to say her name. Michelle Nicolajo, the one that made the um. I remember when you yes! used to oh. fill my heart Yo. with joy. Yes, what's Yo, that it? shit was dope. It was a yeah. love and basketball. Yes. She got this other song, Beautiful, but they be yes. killing this shit, yo, so, yo. Yo, that should be a whole genre in itself. Fast. And I just, yo, give when we our, do cast, it's just so crazy when we do cast and like y'all be bringing shit out of us. Like, I'm like, yo, this this has affected my, like, this is, yeah. yo, doing this podcast is so motherfucking dope because you Thank never you know who me, you gonna y'all. talk to and what they're going to listen out of you. So says. much fucking shit just sitting in this chair, man. <laughs> just sitting here, like, just like, yo, you remind me of. Man. Like, <laughs> so, yo, and shout out to Clara Kid, man, one of the hardest working, one of the most Thank talented you. in the bird. And shout out to your story because even being back at ID Labs, back yeah. when Liz was Cameron, that, that yeah. is dope, man. It's that was a testament to your. Your dedication and all that. So we got a lot of projects coming out this year. So stay tuned. It's a like a lot. I'm not even playing. I'm not playing no games. There's gonna be visuals. There's gonna be films. There's gonna be productions. There's gonna be art exhibits. All of that. So yeah, stay it's, tuned. it's the big push, man. Y'all need to get involved. Get with it Facts. or get ran over. And as always, Drinking Partners is the crew. Hey. Epicast is the family, and we out of here. Peace.